Good morning. Happy Sabbath. How are you all? Good. Great. Good. Good. Okay, so I did this for Sabbath school one time for primary class. Some of you may remember. Um, I have, first we're going to start with a little memory verse. Um, Rodney, do you want to read this for us, please? Okay, so this is Galatians 6, 2. Carry each other's burden, burdens in this way, if you will fulfill the law of Christ. All right. Do you all know what a burden is? What's a burden? What? A problem. A problem? Okay, good. It might be something that, like some kind of work you have to do that you may not always want to do, something difficult, right? So... I have a burden that I carry with me pretty much every day, and it is my purse. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sit it right here, and I wanna see who can carry my burden for me. Card, I'm gonna have you go last. <laughs> you wanna try? <laughs> is it heavy? Do you think it can... Kind of. Kind of, yeah. How about Finn? You want to try to carry this? See if you can lift it up. You strong? All right. <laughs> Don't fall over. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can put it down. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Carter. How high can you lift it up? All right. <laughs> okay, so according to this verse that Carter read, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. So can you, do you guys want to carry my purse for me every day? Yeah? That's great. <laughs> All right, well, I'll take you to work with me. Do you, so does, is that what this means? That you carry people's purses and bags and you will fulfill the law of Christ? Not, not quite. All. Yeah, not quite. So it doesn't, burdens aren't always a physical thing, right? Not something you can um, actually touch or hold. There are some other ver versions. This was from the um, New International Version, the NIV. I've seen other um versions that say bear or help so in other words it really that thing that's a good word to help each other can you help people yeah. how can you be helpful but so let's say your I'm mom and dad <laughs> how can you help your mom and dad By doing your chores. oh all right do you do your chores Wait. yeah i bet that's help i bet your mom appreciates Wait. that by being good, that's a very good way to be helpful. What else? By taking care of your baby. Oh, yeah. That's very helpful. So I'm sure parents really appreciate when you all are helpful around the house and stuff and be playing and being nice with your siblings. Yeah? That are, those are some great ways. And that's, do you think, is that easy or hard? A little bit of both, but do you like being helpful? Is it nice to be helpful with your mom and make her happy? Yeah. 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 And so, and it says in the Bible that by doing that, you are fulfilling the law of Christ. You're making Jesus happy too. So it's a win-win, right? Yeah. All right. Does anyone want to pray for us? Emma? Dear Jesus, thank you for everything. Thank you that we're like everybody's here today. Thank you that that my aunt Jessie is getting her septic tank in. And please tell my daddy not to 
break his leg. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. By the way, my purse, this is 16 pounds. 16 pound purse. All right. <laughs> Go to your seats. Thank you. All right, our scripture reading is uh, found in 1 Corinthians 9, verse uh, 24 and 25. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. At this time, we will listen to a special music from Emma Womack. Jesus loves me. I wish I could do that. I should have uh, stuck with the uh, piano lesson. My mother played, my brother plays, but um, unfortunately I gave it up. I'm not sure why. But um, I have one question. What do you think is the greatest human act or expression that you or I could do? What is the single greatest or one of the greatest human acts that we can do? Actually, if you looked in the bulletin, um, the program is listed in the title of uh, Do You Know Him? But I think that was uh, what Eddie talked about last week. And this could actually be sort of part one and a half, because if you were here at Thanksgiving, we talked about gratitude. I mentioned that for a minute. And uh, we want to continue that. Uh, as the start of the new year in January, there's many things that uh, people will begin to reflect on and think about. And before we start, listen, I do want to appreciate uh, our friend Kelly, who has worked with us at Lake Benui, coming and doing some video. Because of the COVID, we seem to go back to do Zoom a little bit more. 
And so our crowd may be small here, but we appreciate those who might be viewing as well. If you look for the answer of what is the greatest human act that we could do, there is no greater example than you find in the simplest, most familiar text, and that is John 3.16. For God so loved the world he gave. I would suggest today, in the few moments we have, that when we look at gratitude and giving, uh, those really come together and are tied together. Back in uh, Thanksgiving, we talked about gratitude and grace. And then, uh, if you'll be so bold to come back and hear us next week, we'll talk about gratitude and Jesus and connect all that together. So as I thought about it, what is gratitude? How does that really connect? And what is the benefit? Why should you be interested in that? Well, um, I put up a couple of slides from Thanksgiving about what gratitude can do for your health and the relationships. And, and there was a really great quote uh, from one of the Harvard studies about how it really can extend your life. So we want to talk about gratitude for not only our personal uh, benefit, but also to those around us. The quote specifically was, gratitude builds good relationships, it extends your life and the quality of life. Now how could that be? How, how does that really work? And where did this all begin? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, about 1980, sorry, 1999, uh, my mother had cancer, and I found her gratitude journal as we were going through some certain things, which is given to her by a friend. And it is the simple thing about writing things down that is so important. Uh, for many years, I worked in healthcare, and they and the mode, the statement always was. If it isn't written down, it didn't happen. So I, I see the nurses, and I mean, it's like, you got to write it down. And the benefit of the gratitude journal is just really outstanding. I stand before you and tell you that I started one. I remember hearing the expression, the world doesn't need more teachers. It needs more teachers who practice what they teach and preach. So if you're going to stand up and talk about a gratitude journal, you got to practice one. You're going to have one. This one given to my mother has this introduction. Simple Abundance is the book by Sarah Breck, Brecker, and she teaches to keep count and count your gratitudes. At least write five a day, and she wants to distinguish between what your needs are, what your wants are, and you will rediscover the benefit, you will rediscover love, you will rediscover things, in your life, you will live in the present moment. Now you talk about the present moment, but think about this. When the most basic things we do is giving thanks for the meal. Do you ever give thanks and pray for next Tuesday's lunch? No. We are in the present moment and we think about things in this time period. So gratitude. What is it? How does this affect people around me and to you? And is it really, really good for us? The other thing I have mentioned uh, of that benefit is in the book Blue Zones. And trust me, I wear, I wear people out all the time talking about Blue Zones. But it's so interesting that if you think about, as I have this week, what is the single most important thing in your life that relates to people? How is it connected? If we were to connect the dots, and part of that it was interesting, you remember as we all stood right up here on Brandon's last uh, um, sermon about, I guess two weeks ago, and I counted, there were 74 of us, and I also wanted to mention this, if you wanna see me after church or send me a message or something, we'll make sure that I think next week that color photograph uh, will be put together. There's 74 of us standing here, and the connection, the relationship that we have to us and other human beings is the most important thing. 
So as you write that down and you consider it and that giving is a part of gratitude. And I think I've shared this story before of the one raspberry, if you haven't heard that. Um, in New England's Holocaust Museum, there are six glass towers. They're towers that you can walk underneath and there is inscribed the six million numbers of the people, of the Jewish people who represented who lost their lives in the Holocaust. There's one story that says, Ilsa, a childhood friend of mine, found one raspberry in the camp. She carried it in her pocket and she gave it to me at night. And it says, can you imagine a world where your one entire, where your entire possessions is one raspberry and you gave it to a friend. I think that's gratitude. Is the text that we're so familiar with, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. You think about a gift, is, what is a real gift? Is it really motivated by an exchange? Okay, I'm going to give you something, then you're going to give me. Is that a real gift? Is it when you are genuinely motivated by something? Is that a gift? What is the gift? The other text we want to look at um, is in the Sermon of the Mount as well. I wanted to share with you two other stories, if you indulge me for a minute, of sports stories. This Monday night, we saw uh, the college football national championship, okay? Thank goodness, Georgia beats Alabama. But it also makes me think about, then you look up these things about what's the biggest sports viewed uh, episode or event. We also think about the Super Bowl coming up. When you think about what people watch, and so this was just sort of interesting to me as an introduction to my first story. Okay, the top 20 viewed sporting events, Stanley Cup, 5 million people. The number 17 was the Kentucky Derby some years ago, Daytona 500. You get down to number 11, which is the World Series of Baseball. They claim 44 million people who viewed it. The Super Bowl only gets 114 million viewers. The highest one was between Seattle and New England. Now, you jump on down to the top 10, and this amazed me, the newer sport, a uh, UFC, where they get in the, you know, the ring and the box and that, and when McGregor had his championship, one billion viewers. Cricket World Cup, never seen that in a day of my life, Cricket World Cup has 2.2 billion viewers. I skipped over the other thing, boxing, the most watched boxing match was 1987 with uh, Muhammad Ali and Spinks, 2 billion viewers. FIFA World Cup claims 3.5 billion people watching. And the number one most seen sporting event on TV for nearly half of the world's population is the Summer Olympics. 3.7 billion people. Now, when you think about the Summer Olympics, one of the most outstanding things or the, the episodes, the um, performance, if you will, to me, comes in 1992. Now, that was the lead up when America finally gymnastics gets a bronze medal. Then in 1996, they're back for the gold. Okay, if you remember the little girl who was there to do the last vault, okay, the one who had gone before her uh, had missed the landing. So imagine this, the score is tied. They are, uh, America is about to win the gold for the first time ever. Her name was Carrie Scruggs. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you remember, she does the vault, you know, where they run down the thing and hit the springboard and go over, and she hurt her ankle. So here it is, the last thing that you can do. Now, why are we talking about this in gratitude? And I'll hopefully connect that. 
You see the coach talk to her. She goes back again, runs down there, hits the springboard, does the vault, lands, and then hobbles off. The United States wins the goal for the first time. It was very exciting. And from our text this morning in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, Paul says, Do you not know those who all run the race, but one will win the prize? Run in such a way that you will obtain it, everyone who competes, for the prize is temperate. But we run for what? The intemperate prize. So what does the story of a raspberry and Olympic medal connect with gratitude? Well, as I looked to try and understand it and read more about it, you start, I see our teacher here, I started with the most simple thing. Gratitude is a noun. You would think of it as a verb, it's an action thing, but actually gratitude is a noun, which means it is this, what is it now? Person, place, or thing. You think of thankfulness that you give thanks. You go to Starbucks, you get a cup of coffee, you say thank you, you get a piece of pie, somebody opens the door, you express that more as a adjective or a verb. Gratitude is a noun, it is that space, my favorite word, where we can live. Why does Carrie Scruggs and Payne go through that? Maybe for a medal, sure, but I think it's the gratitude for her team, the opportunity. If you really want to look at the answer, I think you find it in the Lord's Prayer. If you look at Matthew 6, where Jesus is teaching the Sermon on the Mount, he goes through the and says, here's how I teach you to pray. Remember that the first two things, uh, or sorry, the first three statements, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and then what is the first thing we are to do? We give, we ask that he will give us our daily bread. When I really put that under a microscope and I thought about that, it is that exchange, the giving, that is a principal thing of gratitude. Also, last time at Thanksgiving, we talked about the longest Harvard study, 75 years of longevity. 724 men in Boston in different neighborhoods. There's still 60 of them that participate in this study today. What is the clearest message? Again, why are we talking about gratitude? What is there that connects us? The clearest message out of the 75-year study is good relationships keeps us happier and healthier. The other statement that the recent gentleman coordinating the study said, loneliness is toxic. There are mo more of us who live less healthy, healthy lives, health declines, brain function declines, and are shorter. It's a simple, simple point. Gratitude, giving in relationships, keeps us happier and healthier. Now, how do we do that? How do we have the energy and focus to keep up a gratitude journal, which is one thing we'll talk about next week. I bring you one more interesting story, and then I want to talk about energy, because the whole world is filled with energy, as you know. And there is nothing more simpler than to look at this as the first law of um, well, the first law of energy is in thermodynamics, the law of exchange. I think about one other sports story, if you will indulge me, and that was as we come into basketball season, and Jimmy Malvano was the uh, coach of the um, North Carolina, North Carolina State um, Wolfpack, and they won the national championship in 1983. It was called the Cinderella story because they were not picked to win, and they were pretty far down uh, in the brackets. Later, Jimmy Valvano had cancer. He had a very tearful, <coughs> excuse me, 
final talk, and he told about his life philosophy. And this is the point that I wanted to share, because when things are most difficult, uh, how do we have gratitude? How do we have the energy for that? Jimmy V had to be helped to the stage. He was that far into his cancer and died soon after. And he said, look, I have three things I do every day. I laugh. He said, laughing is good for you. He said, number two, you must think some every day. He said, really, you know, put your mind in gear and think some. And he said, the third thing, do something, experience something that brings you to tears. He said, if you will do that, you will have a very full day. You will have do that seven days in a row, and you will have a great week. Do something that brings you to tears, either in laughter and joy. But I think he's really saying, be alive. Experience life. So we go back to energy. Energy is defined as the ability to do work. If you consider human energy, okay, today you have the energy to come to church, to sit here, to do something, to stand up and sing. It's really clear to me in this connection of people because it's easy to go along when things are happy, all their friends are around, there's no issues, COVID's not on the rise, you got everything you wanted on your Christmas list. All of that is great, but it is clearly the energy that it takes to do things when it's difficult. Now, the first law of thermodynamics says energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. So what does that mean for us? I think in both life and in our spiritual sense, it is the connection that where we can get the energy to continue on and do things when we don't want to, when we're not motivated. Sometimes it takes a lot of energy to love your neighbor when they're not very friendly. So in closing, I give you one last story, but I want to review again the concept of gratitude as a noun, as a place or a space where we live and can receive the good gifts and also give in a very genuine way. It really is to answer one question. Which way do you look? You look up, you look down, you look to the side. Where are we looking and what do we see? The story of that is, um, I'm sorry, Jerry isn't here or a few others, but several years, uh, more than several years ago, unfortunately, the barn there beside um, my dad's shop burned down. Later, we rebuilt it and a tree fell on it. <laughs> then the third time, I decided to build something and really didn't get too excited about it, but I left that burnt part of the floor in his shop, which is... Um, and concrete. Today I'm excited to say, and if you've been to our Lake Benui, we're in a, a major renovation of that. This week we put up tall glass that you can see out to the uh, lake. Um, if Max was here, I was going to tell him that we, we also put in a huge seven foot uh, dome window, and it looks good. Which way do you look? I can look down and I can see the charred concrete where it burnt. It was a very disappointing day. Or you can look up and you can see the beauty of the glass, the lake. Where do we look? It's a question every day. It's a question that also determines, I think, your gratitude. It determines the quality of your life. Which way do you look? Which way are you looking? There are many remorseful, sad situations. There are many things that don't go away, nor do you want to hide them. They are part of our experiences in life. Yeah, the fire was devastating, and the remains are there. But I tell you, it's important that we look up. And to look up every day is a habit. It is something that we can do, we can choose to do, but it starts with your thoughts. Which way are you looking? 
there's a short little poem that was, uh, I think, gratefully done, wonderfully done by um, Meryl Streep, who played uh, Margaret Thatcher in the movie Iron Lady. And she is um, seeing the doctor, and he says, how do you feel? And she says, how do you fe feel? She says, what are you talking about? How do you feel? She says, watch your thoughts, because it's your thoughts that turn into your words. And watch your words, because your words turn into your actions. Watch your actions, because they become your habits. Watch your habits, because they become your character. Watch your character, because it becomes your destiny. Look up. Look up and have gratitude. We will have a greater experience in our life. It will add to our longevity. It will add to our relationships. We think of again, the famous text, the one that we all know so well, God gave to us. He gave to us. It is the giving in gratitude that is so important to recognize and to practice. Let us pray. Oh God, you have given us your son, which we are so thankful. You have given to us life, and so may we today and each day understand that giving, and let us learn to practice that only through the connection with you, through the energy of that connection that you give to us. We're so thankful to be here. Lord, protect those who are not here, who are sick. We pray this all in your name. Amen.